Hey everyone, thanks for coming back to my video series. This is lesson two out of I don't know how many. If you want to watch lesson one or any of the others, I'm going to be linking to a playlist and they'll all be there. I would really recommend that you do go back to lesson one if you haven't seen it yet because we're going to be talking about the stuff that we already have established there. And again, like I said, it's, it's claw hammer, but it's going to be based on the way I do things and you're going to need to know that stuff moving forward. A quick review of the first video, we talked about how I do the bum ditty in claw hammer, which is two down strokes and then a stroke with the thumb. And the way I do it differently is just alternating with an up, then a down. Right? And again, the bum ditty is a four beat pattern with notes on one, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so that's the basis of everything. Today, we're going to talk about how to do another right hand technique, which is drop thumb. And if you're unfamiliar with drop thumb, the basic theory of that is that in claw hammer playing traditionally, the thumb is plucking this short string. And the short string is never fingered with the left hand. There are no notes that are played on that. It's only ever played open and only ever played with the thumb. And that's all the thumb is doing. There are a lot of players who play it that way. They'll never do anything else with the thumb or with the string. Their playing sounds awesome. I love it. Uh, a lot of players will also though incorporate what we're calling drop thumb, which is exactly what it sounds like, allowing the thumb to drop down to other strings. And you're usually doing that to fill in that second beat of the, the bum ditty that we talked about, the, the beat that doesn't have a note on it. Doing that as well as uh, kind of filling out melodies and doing things that way. And the way it traditionally looks is one, two, three, four. So now you hear that every beat in that four beat pattern is filled. And you're pretty much always going down to this second string here. We're going to talk about in a few minutes how to incorporate with these other strings and specifically the way I do it, which is a little bit different than other people. But for now, that's the basic idea. And as I said in the first video, when I do up on beat one, that's something that I don't do when I'm drop thumbing because it would look like this. And that just, it twists your hand sort of out of shape and it destroys the whole point of up picking, which is to create that fluid back and forth motion because this is a lot more fluid than this, which is what you're usually seeing in claw hammer. So I will drop, I will use the downstroke when I'm drop thumbing. If I'm going to another string to create sort of a melody, I will typically up pick on beat three. So it's the opposite. Instead of up on beat one and down on beat three, it's down on beat one and up on beat three. And you can kind of see why. Uh, it keeps the hand in that fluid motion, which I really like. Um, like I said in the first video, it might feel a little awkward at first, but I think you may take to it, so give it a try. Now, when I talked about dropping down onto other strings, it creates sort of a Having a lower note on that offbeat creates sort of a syncopated, jaunty feel. So, uh... And that's fine. Um, it's definitely a different feel, though, and it can have the effect of maybe interrupting a little bit the, the flow. A player who I see do it a lot is Dan Geller, and I really, really enjoy his playing. And I've learned a lot by watching him play and listening to recordings of him play. And he's really awesome. You should check him out. Dan Gellert, he's a contemporary player. Um, one thing I have learned to do a little bit differently is what we're going to talk about today. And that's incorporating pull-offs into the drop thumb. Pull-off is uh, in its counterpart, a hammer-on. It's a technique that you're probably familiar with. And we're going to talk more about in later videos. 
But a lot of these techniques will work together in ways that create sort of their own third technique. So it's, it's hard to talk about them in isolation. Well, like I said, we'll talk about that later, but right now we're gonna talk about it in the context of drop thumb. So a pull off, if you're unfamiliar, it's a way to get a note out of a string without plucking it with your right hand. So you start a note and then pull off. And you're in effect plucking that string. Right? And the counterpart is a hammer on where you're, instead of pulling off of the string, you're hammering on to the string. So pull offs with a drop thumb are a way to hit these low strings and get that note. It might sound sort of like this. In fact, it's really nice if you're using an adjacent string because you'll get that descending so that it no longer sounds like a syncopated beat, it sounds just like another part of the melody. So it might be more like. And you can even do that as an exercise. Again, I'm dropping down with my thumb and striking down with my finger. If you want to expand that exercise, you can use hammer-ons to go up. And then pull-offs on the way back down. And if you'll notice, when, when I'm not dropping down on the way up, I am up picking on beat one. Or I should say doing the alternating up-down. And you see how fluid that is with the right hand? Perfect. And you can get pretty fast, pretty easy. And again, the key isn't speed necessarily, but it shows how fluid it can be when you do that. So try that exercise. Uh, try to incorporate it into the tunes that you've been playing. You might find that some of the tunes, you're already doing those series of notes, just doing it in a different way, maybe only with uh, striking down with your index finger. Some tunes, that they won't do that. But uh, if you do it, you'll get an alternate kind of melody, and you'll find that it might be a fun way to mix up what you're already doing, add a little variety. And one thing that we haven't addressed yet, which we're going to in the future, is using different tunings. This is the kind of standard open G tuning. Slightly out of tune. Um, but using different tunings, you'll find that that can come in handy in different ways. When you're in a... C tuning, well now you have a different relationship to the string, so that's kind of interesting because then you're playing two notes in a row. It's a different feel. You can do all sorts of stuff. It might not be exactly the way you want to do it, but again, different tunings will give you different options. So explore that too if you're used to playing in alternate tunings. Uh, let me know how it goes. Tell me in the comments what you're thinking. If something's unclear, tell me. Get a conversation going with each other. I really would love to uh, hear what you all are doing. So even link me to some videos of you playing where I can see what's going on. I love learning right along with you guys. All right, until next time, take care.